All right, hi everybody. Ryan back here with you again uh, for uh, part two of this uh, Alice Chalmers D14 carburetor rebuild. Uh, in the first video, we did a, a disassembly, took everything apart. Uh, I had uh, two of those uh, jets or nozzles that uh, broke off. I had to drill those out and retap them out, so we had to do that. Uh, since then, uh, I soaked these. First, I uh, used my uh, wire wheel and the bench grinder, cleaned these surfaces all up and then um, soaked everything in some uh, carburetor cleaner for about two hours then uh, cleaned it off with uh, brake parts cleaner and then uh, took an air gun and blew everything out so i uh, got all my new parts laid out here which you guys will see in a minute um, so with that we're going to go ahead and put this thing together and uh, make you guys uh, if you're new if you haven't already go ahead and subscribe and all that and uh, hit the bell for the updates and uh, then when we do stuff like this you always get the updates on it um, you know we're always doing farm equipment stuff uh, trucking stuff uh, truck maintenance uh, you know all kinds of stuff going on around here so uh, yeah if, you, if you're not subscribed uh, please do that and uh, that way you're always up to date on what we got putting out so uh, with that uh, we'll go ahead and continue here so let me adjust this a little bit and we'll get started All right, so the, kind of just going to do this all in reverse order. First thing I'm going to do is put this uh, power jet in, and it goes right down in the center there. Gonna get this thing in there. I just want that just snug like that. So that guy's in there. And then um, we've got the plug that goes in the other side of that same port. Go ahead and put that in. All right, so we got that. The uh, next thing we're gonna do is uh, put in the main nozzle, which is this guy here. Um, got the new gasket on there. Um, if you guys watched the first video and I took it apart, the old one didn't even have a gasket on it. So um, I don't know how that was working out. that now put in our choke shaft which we'll have to put the felt and um, those little cups and all that stuff on there so let's see how that fit in there And this just uses felt on each side and then we have one of these little retainers here and wherever my socket set went okay now I'm losing stuff Right in front of me. So I'm actually just going to use a socket that's uh, about the same size. 
can just tap that down in there. Make sure it's started straight. And then That's pretty much it. Just want that to be flush. Put this felt down over the shaft here. All right. Okay, now I got that in, go ahead and put the uh, choke plate in. This one is definitely not as worn as the old one. There we go. And yeah, now it's just a matter of getting it lined up in there and um, we'll put our screws in. These are really small. This is the time when a magnetic screwdriver would come in handy. <laughs>
which I have one somewhere, but uh, like everything else around here. Okay, to simplify this task, I actually went and grabbed a little magnet on a stick here. And uh, we're just going to use that because we're going into brass, so it shouldn't stick to that, but it probably stick to everything else. So, real careful. Bingo. Because one started. Now this plate in here is slotted, so I kind of want to lay these loose and make sure you get free movement and it's centered and all that, then tighten it down. choke and we put this piece on of course actually upside down got this new shouldered bolt here with the spring on it from this side. Actually, I think this is... No. Tighten that down. And then we'll tighten this guy down over here as well. Chokes all down a lot tighter than um, we were before. Pretty satisfied with that. <laughs> so where are we now? So I believe that's everything down here, besides the plug. We got a new plug here with a pickcock. We're gonna put that in there. 
And, um, just gonna put a little thread sealing on that. Grab a wrench. And that's uh, pretty much the uh, bottom side there. So with that, we'll uh, so we'll move on up to the top here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put in the uh, throttle shaft and the uh, throttle valve here. Um, actually, I was sitting here messing around and I already stuck there the little rubber seal. I just stuck it in there and I don't want to try to take it back out, but I just did put that in there. So we've got that and then uh, kind of the same drill is on the, uh, the choke shaft. Uh, we're going to put the one with the hole in it over on this side. And then we've got the, uh, the blank one or the plug basically is going to go over on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in first. that in and we'll set this one in that flush there. So now I'll go ahead and put the shaft in here. It's a lot better than we were before. <laughs> I'm actually going to tap this in a little bit more. set this guy in. And you want to put that in with the number facing the flange here.
put that one in and don't tighten it all the way yet uh, in case you gotta shift it over a little bit for the second bolt or screw. And again, this, these plates are kind of have a, I guess you could call it a chamfered edge. See where it's kind of, kind of slanted down. So when it, as it closes, it kind of makes a seal. And on the other side, it's cut the opposite direction. So it can only go in there one way. I mean, as long as you have that, that number, that 18 facing up. that yeah a lot a lot tighter than we were before <laughs> right. so now we're going to put these two jets back in So we had the uh, the idle jet, then the economizer jet. So this the bigger one here is the idle jet. And again, make sure you got a. A screwdriver that's thick enough to where it kind of fits tight in there because if you got a, a thin, I use these to to get them started but these are really thin so if, if it's too thin you can actually get too much play in there and you'll you can break those tips off in there and this guy drops way down in here All right, and that's it there. Um, so what do we got next? Let me drop that. And Turi goes in there. Actually, we won't put that in yet. We'll go ahead and put this needle and seat in. You need a really wide flat tip screwdriver. Or, uh, this is actually a gasket scraper. Put this thing in. Use that. Just gonna clip around that. 
and we'll put our new float in. This is a lot, it's a lot looser than the old spring. I might actually pull the old one back out of here and use it. Yeah, I like that fit a lot better. <laughs> so that's going to drop down in there, like so. And we'll put this pin through. And you just want to make sure all that's working in there. Which it looks like it is. Now what I was saying, like I said, if that's, uh, if these are filled up, sorry. <laughs> these are filled up with fuel. Instead of floating, it's going to drop. You know, it's just going to dump fuel. It's going to continuously fill the bowl on the carburetor and, and basically flood the thing so so that was the problem with the old one here <laughs> but I'm liking that now we gotta check that I keep holding this up between the bottom of this and the bot and the top of this flat surface here should be a quarter inch yeah, and that's how you preset this because they can be bent or whatever so the thing you want to bend it if you have to adjust it you want to bend it right here on these rods so we'll measure from uh, the bottom of this or the, it's upside down so it's technically the top but from the top down to this casting we want to be a quarter of an inch so we'll check that real quick Okay, so I've got a tape measure, and we're just going to measure from this surface right here. See, mine are really, they're pretty high. They're about three-eighths of an inch, so we're going to have to bend them down a little bit, both on each side. So, and you don't want to put pressure against that needle and seat. That's at a quarter. That's at a quarter. I'm pretty satisfied with that. So, because that that can change the level of the fuel in the bowl with where those are set at. So, like I said, you want to make sure they're a quarter inch. So, that's pretty much it here. The only thing we have left are these two needles in the Venturi, of course. So we'll go ahead and put this guy together. Then we'll put these two needles in here. So and that uh, should be about it. So. This, this kind of gasket kind of goes around this venturi. There's a little edge in there, like a land. Let it go. <laughs> All 
without ripping it. There we go. So just be careful. See, there's a little kind of a land down there where this gasket goes. So just be careful not to rip the gasket as you're putting it on. And that goes right there. Actually. I'm actually going to have to take this little seat back off. Put this on here. The old gasket wasn't like that, <laughs> so it was able to just pull that off. So, or it went like that. So, a little bit different. Actually, it looks like I think somebody actually made this gasket from the way it looks. So, which nothing wrong with that. We do that if we have to. So. All right. So now I'm gonna set this down on here. Flip this over, put the screws in. Again, uh, new screws came with the kit. Alright, let's roll in. I'll get my big screwdriver out and get my final tightening here. Or bigger screwdriver, I should say. So now we'll put these two needles in. So this is the uh, idle adjustment. And this one we're going to turn it all the way in until it seats, then back it out one turn. Seated there, so there's a half and one. Why in the world? All right, now the power adjusting needle. We're going to do the same thing with it, turn it all the way down. And back it out one turn. So it's a half, one. 
and there you have it so um, other than that, I just got to put my uh, fuel elbow on right here and should be good to go. Again, put a little bit of thread sealant on this. And then you just want to keep in mind which way you took it off. So now my, my fuel line comes in pretty much parallel with the uh, carburetor. Just a hair more. All right, and there, now we're done. <laughs> so next thing, turn this out just a little. Alright, so there you have it. Uh, with that, I guess we'll take it out to the tractor and um, we'll see what happens here. So um, I'll take it out there and we'll put it on real quick and see if I screwed anything up or not. So. <laughs> Alright, so out here in the other uh, shed, uh, got the uh, carburetor on, got the uh, gas turned on right now. It's kind of dark out here, but um, no leaks or nothing on there yet. Uh, like I said, we got the gas on, everything went back on pretty easy. Uh, looks pretty good to me, so we'll see what it does. Um, yeah, this place is a disaster out here. Um, I need to clean this place up before doing more videos out here. It's almost embarrassing. Um, but with that, um, before we start, we gotta have the cracking of the ceremonial beer for good luck, and hopefully this thing will start. And, um, I didn't screw anything up. So with that, uh, we'll go ahead and see if it'll start. All right. Actually turn this around. All right, I got this turned around here. Let's uh, give her a little fuel. And I'm not going to choke it the first time. We'll see what happens. Make a couple little adjustments here. Give her a little more fuel. 
what I'm doing on that uh, screw back there, I'm just setting below idle. So that way we're, when we have the throttle all the way back, um, that's the low as I want it to go. That's probably a good place to start. So to do a final adjustment, we'll have to get it up to operating temperature and all that, and it's already already getting kind of late out here, so that's probably all I'll do tonight on it. But. Uh, it runs and it runs a lot better than it did, so I guess it's a success. A success. So let me uh, turn this around and finish up here. Alright guys, so that's a uh, carburetor rebuild on a uh, Alice Chalmers D14. Um, the uh, D15s I believe are similar in a lot of other tractors. Some of the WDs, I think the later ones have the same carburetor. I was actually looking at my two WDs out here and they've actually got the Zenith carburetors on them so they're not the same as this one. And it looks like they're a little, it looks like there's kits on there but I'm not seeing bowls and stuff for our floats. So. Um, yeah, so I need to do those one of these days too as well, like everything else around here needs something. But uh, it's not a bad little project, uh, so I hope you all enjoyed that. It hopes to help you out uh, if, if you're looking to do something like this. And um, as you guys know, we're, uh, we're always doing stuff like this, uh, truck stuff, owner-operator stuff, uh, farming stuff, tractor stuff, and all that. Um, so again, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, like the video and hit the bell for the updates uh, if you want to see stuff in the future. So again, uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.